In this video, you are going to learn what React elements are, how to render them, how they are different than components, and we are also going to go over some examples right from the React docs so you can understand these a little bit better. I think that for creating React apps and becoming a professional React developer, or if you already are a React developer and you just want to understand your code better, knowing what React elements are and knowing how they play in React apps is an important thing to know. So first things first, what is a React element? Well, straight from the React docs, they mentioned that a React element is the smallest building block of a React app. And these React elements, much like HTML elements, they represent what the user will see on their web page. And here you can see an example of a React element here. I have an H1 tag, and then within that, I have the text of code Ryan, and then another H1 tag. And what the user would see on the page here is a title of code Ryan. They would see this rendered out on the page, and I will show examples of this here in just a second. And what this technically is right here within the H1s and including the H1s, this is what's called JSX. And I have an entire video explaining JSX, so I recommend watching that full video. But this is kind of a React's way of, it looks like HTML, but it's actually JavaScript. And like I say here, this looks quite similar to HTML, but this JSX here, it's actually going to turn into just a JavaScript object, a lightweight JavaScript object. And then based on the data within that object, React is going to take care of creating this HTML element for you, rendering it to the DOM and so forth. And one of the ways it does that is through the React DOM library, as there's a React library and then also a React DOM library. And the reason that there are these two different libraries is because React is kind of platform agnostic. It doesn't care whether you are writing a native app. It doesn't care if it's like a specific desktop app or something like that. You can use the React library in all those different situations. But the React DOM library, that is the specific library that is used to render things to the web, to the actual document object model that you would see when interacting with a web page. Okay, so the React DOM will take this React element here, which is actually just a JavaScript object. It will take this object and it will render your HTML elements using kind of the data within that object. So a React element is the smallest building block of a React app. It looks a lot like an HTML element, but this is actually JSX and it's actually just a lightweight JavaScript object in which React will use to then render your HTML elements. And it's important to remember that these, these are not components. A React element is different than components. A React component, which I will cover in full detail in future videos, that is just a JavaScript function that will render React elements. Components are made from React elements. And these components are functions that will just render out these React elements and eventually render out HTML elements to the DOM to help you create your user interface. Now, I kind of mentioned before rendering these React elements. And to do this, you actually need to use what's called a root element. And in most React apps, React elements are rendered within one single root element. Now, this isn't necessarily something you need to do. Like you could potentially have multiple root elements to render your React app in. However, in most applications, you are gonna have one root element that you are going to render all of your React elements within. And you first need to create this root element. This is like, if you think of like a tree-like data structure, this is going to be the root of that tree. And then all of your React components are going to go down that tree. So a React app can kind of be thought of as a tree-like data structure in which your components are these nodes of your tree. And then it starts at this root element. And everything within this root element React will kind of manage and React DOM will manage and kind of control your user interface that way. So to create a root element, you first pass it to React DOM dot create root. In this React DOM library that React will give you, it will create this root element. So here you can see that on this line, I assign a constant root 
is equal to the return value of root. So I'm accessing the create root method on the rackdom library. And then I am passing in an element. You pass in whatever element you want to be your root element. So in this case, I am querying the document and I am getting an element by ID and with the ID of root. So this example assumes that you have an element with the ID of root. And in React apps, if you just use like create React app or a lot of kind of templates, it will automatically give you an HTML page that will have a div with an ID of root. And it kind of does this automatically for you in which you get that root div and you create your root element and then everything that you create within your React app will be rendered within that root element. And I'll show you an example of how this looks in a code pen here in just a bit, okay? So in React apps, you render your React elements within a root element. And like I said, you don't necessarily need to just have one root element, but this is kind of the standard practice in most React apps. Now, after you create this root element, so this is going to return this React DOM dot create root returns a root element. And then after you create this root element by calling React DOM dot create root and passing in what you want to be your root element, you can then render your React elements by calling root dot render. So here it would look something like this in which I created this root element and that's going to return an element that has a render method on it. And then I can pass my React element here into my root.render. And that will render out my React elements to my web page. Now, in React, when you create your React apps, it's common to have a single root component called something like app or index, and rendering that within your root element. And then from your root component, you kind of render everything else within your React app. But for the sake of this example, we're just showing one single React element here and how those elements are rendered within your root element that you create here. So let me show you an example of this to make things quite a bit more clear. So here I have a code pen here, and this is basically just a, it provides an environment of in which I can write React code, some HTML, and then it shows what is rendered here. And in this code pen, you can see over on the right side here, this is me writing React. And what I do is exactly in my example, I say my root element is equal to calling react dom dot create root. And then I call document dot get element by ID and I pass in root. And then as you can see in my HTML here, I have a div with an ID of root. So right here, I am getting my root element that is over in my HTML here. So when you create a root element, you have to pass a DOM element that exists in your page. And here I'm querying the document to get this root element here. And React's gonna return that root object in which I can then render my elements within. So here I create an element just like I did in my code editor here before. Const element is equal to this JSX expression here, which remember this is actually just an object, but this is just a basic React element here. And then I call root dot render, and then I pass in my element. And when I do that, that is going to render my elements in between this div right here it's going to basically inject all of my React within this div. So this element's content is replaced with your component or your React elements. And as we discuss further, we will talk about how typically you won't just render like a single element within a React app like this. You'll render the root of your component, but we'll cover that in future videos. But here you can see to the my web page here, it renders code Ryan because React will take this JSX here, it will inject it into my root element, and it will create this HTML here. And then you can see if I change this here, it will update my DOM to have the updated element here. So hopefully that makes React elements and rendering them a little bit more clear. There's one thing I want to mention regarding this topic, 
And then I'll come back to this to kind of summarize things a little bit for you here. So the last thing I want to touch on is updating elements. And one thing to remember is that React elements are immutable, meaning you can't change them. And the only way to change that element within the UI is to create a new element, to create a brand new element. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to constantly keep calling root.render because React allows for your components, your functions to hold some sort of state, which allows you to change your React elements over time. And that allows for dynamic React elements. But we will cover state and components in future tutorials. But one thing I do want to mention here is that React is pretty clever about updating these DOM elements and it only updates what is necessary. So looking at the React docs here, we can see that in this example, React mentions it right here. React only updates what's necessary. And if you go to reactjs.org, you can read through these docs. They have a example on rendering elements. I think that that would be a great supplement to this material here. But as you can see here in this example, what they have here is they're showing a web page and they're showing how this time is being incremented. And it's kind of in this constant loop right here. And they're also showing a snapshot of the like inspector within the DOM and they're showing what is being re-rendered to the DOM. And as you can see here, the only thing that's changing here is the time, is this specific React element right here. You can see that the hello world and the entire like div and your entire React app, that is not changing. So when you update your elements in React, React is very smart about only updating what needs to be updated. But we will cover state components and managing that state in future videos. I just wanted to touch on this as it relates to updating React elements. So a React element is the smallest building block of a React app, and they effectively represent what the user will see on the page. It's similar to HTML elements. However, a React element is actually just a lightweight JavaScript object, and React will use the information of that object to render out your HTML elements. And in web applications, React will use the React DOM library to render out these elements. Now, when you render out your elements, you're first going to create a root element, and then you are going to call root.render to render out your React elements. And if we go back to the example here, you can see that first I need to pass in an element that exists in my DOM here. So I pass in this HTML root, and then I create my React elements. This could be several React components, but I will eventually render them by calling my root element, and I will call the dot render method and pass them in there. And then React DOM will take care of rendering that to the DOM. And then keep in mind that React elements, when you change them, React is very smart about changing them and will prevent unnecessary re-rendering and stuff like that. So hopefully this gives you a good understanding of React elements. There's definitely more to know about React, so stay tuned for future videos on components, state, the life cycle of components. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my video on JSX to further your understanding of how React works. So thanks for tuning into this video, and I will see you in that next one.